Bienvenido! And welcome to our painting series. This week we're going to talk about pigments. So in an earlier session, um, we did allude to pigments, but I think we kind of rushed through it a little bit. So we're going to do a bit of a deeper dive. So Ash, what is a pigment? Well, a uh, pigment is what gives your paint color, basically. It's what you dig out of the ground to make your paints colorful. And what's a dye? They are different in that dye is soluble and pigment is not. It's insoluble. That's right. And there is actually something that's a little bit in between. You can take a dye and mix it with a salt to basically precipitate it. So basically it sticks onto something and becomes insoluble itself. And when that happens, it's, that's called a lake. So if you ever hear of colors like rose matter lake or scarlet lake, they're referring to something that in its natural state is a dye, but it's, it's being used as a pigment by precipitating it. So what do you have in your box? What do you use? Oh, you mean in my tabaret? Yes, in your tabaret. Okay, let's have a look. So, let me see. Lots of goodies here. Looks like I need to replace my red. So this is sort of what I would have in a typical palette. So let's start with the white. You use uh, titanium white. Yes, and most painters today would use titanium white. So in, in older days, um, painters had a bit of a conundrum. There were the two main whites that they had available to them was a flake white and a zinc white. And uh, flake white was a nice opaque white, great for mixing, um, but it wasn't pure white. It had a kind of a yellowish tinge. And zinc white, on the other hand, was very pure, but it was very transparent. Right. And when titanium white came along, um, it, you got the best of both worlds. You had a really thick paint, uh, very opaque and uh, and very white. In fact, too white. In fact, I seldom would use titanium white without actually putting a little bit of yellow something, something in there. Into it. Yeah, um, but it is very very solid. Of all the paints, it's um, like toothpaste with concrete added. Yeah, uh, toothpaste. I wouldn't brush your teeth with this stuff. <laughs> uh, in fact, I wouldn't brush your teeth with any of these things. Um, so most paints, most pigments are toxic to some degree. Um, I think with common sense, uh, they're safe enough to use. Don't don't put a paintbrush in your mouth. Like uh, Van Gogh. Yeah. Uh, so the next color. You got three blues going on there. Uh, that, that, that you've got your three main blues in your palette. Um, so I guess start with ultramarine. Okay. So ultramarine is the workhorse of blues. It is. Um, it has a long history. Um, back in Egyptian times. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, they, uh, they actually made it out of um, lapis lazuli, I believe. Yes, and I think you have some lapis lazuli. I do, sure. I do. This is lapis lazuli. It is a beautiful royal blue color, and the Egyptians actually used to make uh, their purple and blue dyes out of lapis lazuli. And it became, it was basically a color for the royalty. Yes, it was very expensive. Uh, it was discovered in Afghanistan, and it was, it's very difficult to mine. Uh, well, it was at the time, so it was rare. So modern uh, ultramarine, uh, French ultramarine as it's called, um, is actually made from uh, synthetically a lot lot less expensive in fact it's one of the cheaper blues available in the market uh, it's the workhorse of blues great for mixing uh, has a slightly reddish tinge to it um, so it's not exactly a straight up the middle blue um, so that's my what that's my first blue second blue is cobalt blue cobalt blue uh is like the truest of blues. It is the blue of blues. Um, it is expensive. It is also a, a weak blue. A weak blue in terms of how it stands up to other colors. That's right. So weak means that if you put it, if you took a little bit of orange and mixed it with ultramarine, um, it would tint the color a little bit. I mean, it would certainly change the color. But you take the same amount of orange and mix it with cobalt blue and you've got quite a muted color already. So it just basically doesn't stand up very well to other colors, but yes. a beautiful color. And the closest thing we have to straight up the middle blue. Yes, it is a true, the truest of blues. So the other blue I have is a halo blue. 
Uh, Taylor Blue is awesome. Uh, it's one of my faves. It's highly staining uh, pigment. It's slightly greenish in compared to the other blues. Um, and it's inexpensive. Woohoo! Yes, uh, it's a relatively recent invention, and uh, I, you're, you're right, it is staining. When I, I always can tell when a student in the class is using Taylo Blue because it's, it's stained the color of their brushes, it's in their clothes, it's in their hands, it's in the desk. It is incredibly, it's the energizer bunny of, of paints. It yeah. just keeps on going. I never, I actually never used it much. Um, I used it a little bit as, a, as an accent color. Um, like if imagine like an awning or a jacket or something. I, I, and I really wanted to get a very strong blue. But I've, um, I've, start, I've changed a little bit. I actually started using it more. Um, and in fact, a recent painting I did, um, I've used Taylor Blue as one of the dominant blues in the painting. So I'm getting used to it. Yes. Yes, some people gravitate towards it right away. Other people have to sort of warm up warm to it. Up to it. <laughs> All right, how about this one? One blue that we actually didn't mention um, uh, that used to be in everybody's palette. Uh, Prussian blue would have been pretty important in an artist's palette, right? That's right. There's, there's probably a lot of colors um, that... Uh, have sort of fallen by the wayside and the people who really the only people who use them today are people who want to recreate the the look of the old masters and that's so, right purists so purists and they will pull out venetian red um they will use flake white rather than the new titanium white and uh, something like a prussian blue it's a beautiful color uh, there's no question it's a lovely color um but today it's like Taylor old blue kind of beats it hands down. Uh, yeah, it doesn't perform. It doesn't stand up next to our new our new blues that we've discovered. Um, Interesting fact, came from the Prussian army. The color of the Prussian army uniforms was uh, was Prussian blue. That's where they got the name. Cool. Hmm? Uh, dioxazine purple. Um, it is a single pigment. Even though we kind of think of purple as being kind of halfway between red and blue, uh, dioxazine is a single pigment. Uh, it's very very strong. <laughs> Uh, and, it, and it is right down the middle. So you've got kind of equal amounts blue, equal amounts red. And on the opposite side of a dioxazine, you would have something like a yellow, a, a lemon, yellow. lemon yellow. And lemon yellow uh, kind of works in the same way. You split that right down the middle. Um, it can be can it act in like the warmer tones and the cooler tones. So if you actually take our color wheel, you can draw basically a straight line right through the middle there. And what you've got is you've got some warmth and you've got the cool side. Um, and so purple, this purple straddles both of those, uh, the cool and the warm. And this lemon yellow also straddles between uh, cool and warm. Um, the alternative to a dioxazine purple is a cobalt violet, and it is gorgeous. Uh, I've never worked with it myself because... And it's expensive. Yes, it's it's massively cheap. expensive. Uh, I just looked up a, so a 37 mil, which is what these are here. These are 37 mil tubes. 37 mil tube of cobalt violet. 50 bucks. Um, yes, it is not. It is not cheap. Dioxazine is not is not uh, inferior by any means. It is an awesome purple. It's not like you're cheaping out by using dioxazine. It's also awesome. And I've certainly been using it more and more. I find, uh, especially in combination with a lemon yellow, you could just get some awesome neutrals with those two. Colors. I've just always loved purple, so I've used it. I've always used it. Okay. <laughs> uh, what about this baby? Alizarin. Alizarin is also uh, quite transparent. Um, it used to be made from a plant, the rubia plant. Um, and the roots of the rubia plant have um, a, co a, a compound in them called alizarin. And uh, they used to use, so if anyone remembers like um, uh, Rose Matter or Matter Lake, Matter Lake, um, that is actually from that rubia plant. Um, and then later on, they found a synthetic way to manufacture that alizarin. They figured out how to do it without having to grow the plant. That's and right. Extract and so the, the modern day alizarin crimson uh, is is uh, from is synthetically produced. Um, there are a lot of people who claim that it's fugitive. In other words, it fades in light. Um, I have to say I've been using it for many years and have never found that to be the case. Um, but I do find that it's getting more and more difficult to uh, to find it. Uh, a lot of places you uh, the stores. You, you see, you will see crimson, alizarin crimson permanent, um, but it's not the same thing. It, it, you don't get the dark tones that you get with uh, real alizarin crimson. Mm -hmm. so. 
Uh, an alternative is is cronacronome violet, um, or uh, it, that can that can work as a as a reasonable alternative yep. to it if you can't get. We're getting into the cads now. So my almost gone tube of cadmium red. Um, yeah. So what can we say about cadmiums? They get a lot of use in this household. That's they, for sure. They certainly do. Um, cadmium colors in general are really opaque. Yes, um, they are. Um, it is true to say that that I, I know a lot of painters have trouble with reds. Um, it is it is really hard to get a pure bright red. Cadmium red probably comes closest, um, but the the challenge a lot of people have with reds is it can be difficult at times to get a red that you can brighten up without getting a really pinky kind of color or, orange. or an orangey kind of color, and that's mm -hmm. one of the challenges. And even cad red, uh, when you start to add white, it, it does get kind of pinky. Um, cad red light is a nice alternative. So if you're ever in a situation where you really need to get a bright, bright red, like it's tomatoes in a still life or something like that, um, you can reach for cad red light. And it's it's not the same as mixing cad red and, and a bit of cad white. orange or something yeah. Yeah, or, or white. Um, it is quite a different color. Um, but cad red is, is typically what I would have for most of the time. I would only pull that out in odd situations. Yes, me too. The, the next cadmium on the list is cadmium orange. Uh, you can get um, close to cadmium orange by mixing cad red and cad yellow. You can. Course. You can get pretty close actually. And um, and again, cadmium orange is probably a color that you could treat as non-essential to, to if you're trying to work with a limited palette. Um, but there will be, again, if I re going back to my idea of a still life, if you've got oranges in a still life and you really want to get a brilliant orange, um, then, then it's useful to reach for a cadmium orange. The other thing I find it useful for is just speed. If you're working with a painting and, Don't you, have to mix you, it. Uh, and you know that you're going to use in cobalt blue and, and an orange to, 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 mute, to mute it, then um, having to mix red and yellow all the time to get that can just slow you down a bit and having a tube of orange just, just means you can get that quicker. So, so far we only have two colors at the moment um, that you can technically mix on your own, but we do buy the paint tubes pre mix So dioxazine, like we said, you can mix red and uh, blue. Which I did for many years. So I painted for many, many years before actually um, bringing cobalt or dioxazine purple into my palette yeah, same thing with same orange. same thing with the orange so the orange you can definitely we all know you can make orange with red and yellow but it is just not the same thing the cad orange is that beautiful pure true orange That's right um so my cadmium yellow i cad uh, it, it is the last of our cads um again it is very opaque um you so basically you can use this to cover uh really nicely um, yeah. Nice warm color. It's beautiful. Yeah. Very strong. Nice true, true yellow. Oh my goodness, is that the time? I guess we underestimated how much there is to say about pigments. I guess so. Okay, we're going to cut it off here and we'll be right back in a moment with part two. And don't forget, questions and comments below. And don't forget, hit, hit that, that like button. button. We'll see you back in a second. Bye. Yo, listen up. Here's the story about a little guy that lives in a blue world and all day and everything he sees is just blue like him inside and outside blue his house with a blue little window and a blue corvette and everything is blue for him and himself and everybody around cause he ain't got nobody to listen to